the overview of the book of Matthew. This will be lesson number two, and uh, we're in chapter 16 of Matthew as uh, the overview. And <clears throat> here's what we've been over so far. The first 15 chapters, Jesus has proved his genealogy, uh, his birth, been tested. He's done got his... Uh, his uh, cabinet members, he done set up a constitution, he done healed, he presented the message, chapter 11 they rejected, and uh, chapter 12, the nation of Israel committed the unpardonable sin and said no and rejected the kingdom and uh, now we're in chapter 16 and you're not going to believe after their rejection the first time Chapter 16. Look at verse 18. 16, 18. Well, 17. 16, 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. That's the first time in the book of Matthew the word church is used. You say, what's significant about that? Well, the church, word church doesn't show up in Matthew until after the rejection. Right? Yeah. Now you're fixing to start to see this top line coming into view. Because what's going to happen? When they reject Jesus Christ, say, no, we don't want you. And ultimately, they, they put him on the cross and crucified him. Well, what happens is, this kingdom is, all right, for lack of a better term, called time out. And this thing is pushed all the way out to here. And left room to add this in. You understand? Is that me? No, it ain't me. All right, so do you see the first time the word church is used was after the rejection. Notice, uh, look at verse, oh, look at verse 24. Verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his... First time the word cross is used after the rejection. The first time the word church is used after the rejection. First time the word cross is used after the rejection. <clears throat> then, what you have is chapter 17. Chapter 17, we'll read this. Look at uh, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them into a high mount. <laughs> i got to show you all this. <clears throat> well, let me read it first. Uh, it, it just stuff. Uh, anyway. Verse 2. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elijah, or Elias, Talking with them. Now let me pause. Ms. Crawford brought up a good point a while ago, and you may be wondering the same thing. In the Old Testament, his name is Elijah. In the New Testament, they call him Elias. The reason for that is in the Old Testament, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. So when you translate Elijah's name from Hebrew to English, you have Elijah. New Testament in Matthew was written in Greek. And when they translate it from Greek to English, it's Elias. Same person. Give you another friend. Jonah in the Old Testament. In Matthew 12, 40, his name is Jonas. Same person. Different spelling because of how you're coming from Hebrew to English or Greek to English. Um, and I was trying to think of a, uh, somebody else. The name... Anyway... Those names like that, uh, or that's for a reason. Now, verse 4. Then answered Peter and said unto, the, unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. 
If thou wilt, let us here, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and a one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now, let's get this. Watch. Chapter 17 is what they call the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus is transfigured before them, and Moses and Elijah appears there. All right. Chapter 17 is a picture and a type of oh, the second coming of Christ where Jesus is transformed. His face did shine as the sun and He's transferred. Guess, guess who shows up right before Jesus comes same coming? Tribulation, two witnesses, Moses, Elijah. Before Jesus comes. 17 is a picture and a type. Moses, Elijah showing up, Jesus transfigured. Verse 1. How many days did He say And after six days, Jesus was take, uh, uh, Jesus taketh Peter, James, John, his brother, and bring them up to a high mountain. You know where he's coming back to? The Mount of Olives. After six days. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready? Jesus said in Peter, Joe, you're going to love this. Jesus said in Peter, a day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years one day. Y'all ready? Adam. From Adam to Jesus uh, birth. 4,000 years. That's four days. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. From the birth, we started everything before the birth is B.C., before Christ. Everything after that is A.D., added to many. After His birth, not after death, it's after His birth. And we are what? 2015. Yep. That's But anyway, our, uh, definitely our days are not the same. But definitely, according to Usher's chronology, uh, 4,000 years from Adam to the birth. Uh, matter of fact, you can go to your Bible if you have the date trip in your Bible. If you've got an old school field, you go to your Bible, Genesis 1 1, it'll say something like 4,004 BC, is what it'll say in Genesis 1 1, right up there above the margin. Uh, and then we're in 2015, that's two days. After six days, um, Jesus was transfigured before them. It's an amazing thing. Uh, I don't know why in the world I don't have time for this. But my mind is running wild. John chapter 2. You don't have to turn. Well, you can't want to. In John chapter 2, Jesus turned the water to wine. It said, And the third day there was a marriage in the kingdom of Galilee. A marriage of the supper takes place about right there. There's two days. And the third day there was a marriage in the kingdom of Galilee. Hallelujah. John chapter 2. You ever wondered why? You didn't start. You don't want it. 
Oh, I, I mean, I got more than my mind that's going crazy. <laughs> Have you ever wondered? Uh, Donna sang about it on Easter. It was four days late, still on time. It took him four days to show up. Yep. <laughs> He's still on time. <laughs> it was four days in the Old Testament. They're like, where's, where's, where's he at? Where's he coming? He's not here. He showed up on the fourth day. And he took and he and he raised Lazarus from the dead. Where would that put us? How long would we be? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, well, I, I, it'll take some figuring, but uh, ooh, I got it. All right, let's get back to. All right, look at chapter eighteen. Chapter eighteen. <laughs> Chapter 18, look at verse 11. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You see how the terminology is changing now. Alright, you've got 19, chapter 19, verse 27. 1927. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye uh, which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit the throne of his glory, Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So verse 28 says, the twelve tribes that followed, or excuse me, the twelve apostles that followed Jesus. There will be twelve thrones uh, set up here. That has nothing to do with us. We're the bride. You have, the way it's going to be set up in the kingdom, you have the king's throne, and then to the, I think it's to the right, you have the bride. You ever seen the, uh, the uh, uh, Charles Heston, the Ten Commandments? You got Pharaoh. You got his, his wife sitting there in a smaller chair. His high back chair, and then hers is just a little, right. uh, not as big as his chair, but it's right there on the right. That's where the bride sits. And then under that, will be twelve thrones. Twelve thrones that's going to be judging the twelve tribes and nations of Israel. <clears throat> It'll be right reversed of Matthew uh, 15 where the Syrophoenician woman came and she went under the table. Well, in the millennium, the bride is going to be buzzed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway. Well, glory. Then, chapter 20. You have the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't have time to deal with the whole thing. But basically, chapter 20, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard is all a matter of where you will sit, where you're... <coughs> Uh, not necessarily you, but I'm talking about the nation of Israel, how they will be ranked in the, in the uh, thousand-year millennial reign. It's how you've taken care of the vineyard uh, according to chapter 20. And then you've got chapter 21. This is where Palm Sunday takes place. He rides into Jerusalem on the dome. Chapter 21 I want you to notice verse 12. 20 and verse 12. Now this is, this is real important. Um, chapter 20, verse 12. No, excuse me. Did I say 20? Uh, 21, 21, 12. 21, 12. Excuse me. 21, 12.
Look at 21, 9. And the multitudes that went before and followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Now, I want you to realize something. In chapter 21, he rides in on Palm Sunday, rides in on the donkey. This same thing is going to happen again. Except it's going to happen here at the second coming. And he's going to ride in on a white horse. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're going to all be gathered in Jerusalem going, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And guess who's going to be riding behind him? Man, the bride's going to be right there behind him. Um, now look at verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And said unto them, It is written, My house. Notice, my house. Y'all see my house? Mm -hmm. Jesus called it, This is my house. Shall be called the house of pride. But ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, don't y'all remember that right there. Matthew. Let's see. I don't know. Matthew 5. One, what? 13? Yes, yeah, 13. My house. <clears throat> My house. Now, look at chapter 22. Chapter 22, beginning in verse 15. Then went the Pharisees, took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians. So the Herodians came unto him trying to trick him. Well, without reading the whole thing, they couldn't trick him. So the Herodians said, man, we can't get him. So verse 23, the same day came to him the Sadducees. They said, well, let's get, let, me, let us give a try. We're smarter than y'all. We'll get him. And from 23 to 33, he confounded them. Look at verse 33. When the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. They couldn't get him. Well, then verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he put the Sadducees to silence, <laughs> they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Master, what is the great command of the law? And so on and so forth. And then he puts the Pharisees to shame. And they couldn't get him. So in chapter 22, he's been tested by the Herodians, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. Nobody can stump him up. Nobody knows the Bible better than him. And there you go. Now, chapter 23. Uh, chapter 3, uh, look at... Uh, Alright, everybody thinks Jesus is, you know, He preaches like Joe Osteen. But look at verse 13. 23, 13. This is Jesus now. But woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you uh, neither go in yourselves, neither suffer them to, uh, that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. <laughs> Therefore shall you receive the greater damnation. Now, somebody was asking a question before class about the degrees of hell. There's the greater damnation. There's a greater damnation. There's a lesser damnation. Then verse 15. Woe unto you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. Man, I wonder how you build a church calling everybody. I mean, verse 16. Woe unto you, you blind guides. Verse 17. You fools, you blind. 19. You fools and blind. 
Oh yeah, Jesus is nice, sweet, loving. <laughs> Verse 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you make clean the outside of the cup of the platter, but within you are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, clean first thou that which is within the cup of the platter, that the outside may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. <laughs> Verse 33. Y'all ready? Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Y'all see all that? Right. He, I mean, unloads both barrels. Hits them right between the eyes. Y'all are the reason we couldn't bring in the kingdom. Y'all are the ones that didn't let this happen. Y'all are the ones that said no to the kingdom. Now watch. Remember? Matthew 21, 13. Jesus said, this is my house in that temple. Alright. Chapter 23. <coughs> verse 37. O old Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often... Would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wing, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Y'all see that? Right. Chapter 21, Jesus said, this is my house. Chapter 23, He said, y'all want it? You can have it. I'm out of here. Amen. Yep. Y'all want to run it? Help yourself. I'm going to turn it over to y'all. It was my house, and I didn't try to clean it up, but y'all don't want it this way. Y'all don't want me to be your king. So I tell you what, I'm going to give it to y'all. This is your house now. Look at 24 verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the... Never went back in there. <coughs> He said, y'all can have it. And he won't walk back in. Now what? He won't walk back into that temple until he walks back in it right here. And it becomes, it be, again, becomes his house. Right now, that over there in Jerusalem, that's not his. That's theirs. But he rides in on a white horse. He said, this is my place now. Chapter 24, he walked out, departed from the temple. He said, y'all can have it. Now, uh, chapter 24, let me deal with this real quick. Chapter 24, he is talking about, <coughs> right here, make sure you get this done. Chapter 24 is about the tribulation and not the rapture. Make sure you got that. It's about seven years tribulation that I'm not going through. And if you're saved, you're not either. Uh, look at verse uh, 24. Chapter 24. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. Get this. Watch it. Gee, the disciples said, we need a sign of your coming. So Jesus starts in Matthew 24 and starts telling them every little detail that'll take them right up to the same time. You say, proof. Okay. Look at verse 13. How many of y'all ever heard this, uh, this verse? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Y'all ever heard that? And they try to pull that on you for here? For us? That ain't for us. You don't endure to the end to be saved. I'm not enduring to nothing. 
I accepted Jesus Christ my personal Savior. I'm not enduring anything. I'm enjoying salvation. Amen. I'm not enduring salvation. I'm enjoying salvation. Amen. You say, well, how do you know? How do you know that right there is tribulation? Look at, read 13 again. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. That's tribulation. Now, look at, oh, let's see, verse 20, no, 29. All the way to 29. Alright, ready? Immediately after the tribulation of those days. What's immediately after the tribulation? Same time. Watch. Immediately after tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man coming high. Does it say clouds or whatever it says? Clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Y'all see that? Verse 30, that's the same kind. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That's it. He's going to gather the, uh, the nation of Israel. Now, do not get that trumpet. That trumpet right there in verse 31 is not the trumpet for the rapture. No, no, no. Don't get somebody so well, that trumpet. No, it's not. No angel's going to sound a trumpet and gather together the, the, uh, uh, the his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. No, no, no. That's here. Right and dividing the word of truth. And then so on and so forth. Does everybody see that? How many, what time do I have? <laughs> All right, look at uh, 24 and verse uh, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, now there, there we go, it's Noah. But here in the New Testament, he spelt Noah. As the days of Noah were, so uh, shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. And knew not till the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Do y'all realize what we're talking about? The coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of Man is right here saying same time. Now notice verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken, the other left. Now, how many of y'all ever heard this? The one taken is taken to heaven, the one that's left is left behind. Y'all yeah. ever heard that? Yeah. Well, let me tell you what it really means. It's the same kind of Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken. And the other left behind. Or, or left. What it says. The one taken is the one taken and sent to hell. Mm -hmm. yep. The one that's left is left to go into the kingdom. Yeah. You say now, it's right reversed here. Here, the one taken is the saved one. The, uh, the one left behind goes to the tribulation. That's not what that's talking about. This is talking about here. The one taken goes to hell. The one left behind 
You say, I don't believe it. All right? I ain't got time, but I'm going to throw it to you, and you just have to get the DVD and rewind, rewind, rewind. Matthew 13, the parable of the wheat and the tares. The parable of the wheat and tares. Hang on. Let me find it. Well, let's see what the parable of the, the wheat and the tares say. Where did the wheat and the tares go? 24. How much? 24. 24. Thank you. Another word parable went he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, key phrase, kingdom of heaven, is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. While men slept, his enemy came, sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. And when the blade was sprang up, brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the household came, said unto him, Sir, dost not thou sow good seed in the field, from whence uh, then hath the tares? He said, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? He said, No, nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. When is the harvest? Here's the harvest. I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first, first, the tares. Good or bad? Bad. bad. You gather first. <laughs> Matthew 24, one shall be taken, the other left. Take first the tares, gather ye together first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat and to the barn. Amen. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. The one taken is the tare taken and burnt. The one left behind is the wheat going into the kingdom. That's Matthew 24. Boy, well, that Bible is wow. That is good. That's it. Now, all right. Don't have time no more. That. Y'all don't get me off track no more. <laughs> Chapter 25 is the judgment of the nations. Let me show you this. The judgment of the nations happens right here. The judgment of the nations has nothing to do with you. We go up here, the bride. The judgment of the nations are the nations that are left to go through the tribulation. Egypt, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, America, wherever, Rome, all these nations are going to be gathered together. The goat nations will be on the left, the sheep nations will be on the right. You say, who are the sheep nations? The sheep nations are the nations that took care of the nation of Israel in the tribulation period. And if America don't change its course, it's going to turn into a goat nation. And America has always been a sheep nation. We've always taken care of Israel. But it looks like they, unless we get some um, something turned around here. Anyway, China is against, they're against, I mean, all countries that surround and border Israel is against them. That's what the whole battle of Armageddon is going to be about. Jesus Christ is going to come and take care of the battle of Armageddon. It's going to have everything. 24, 25, 26 is all happening right here at the second coming. About uh, the uh, judgment of the nations, chapter twenty-five, uh, about verse thirty-one or so. That's where that starts. And then chapter twenty-six, you got the Lord's Supper. You got Judas betraying the Lord, the Garden of Gethsemane. Chapter twenty-seven. You got five mock trials, and Jesus is crucified. 
Look at chapter 27, verse 66. Chapter 27, 66. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. If your Bible ended right there, we'd be in trouble. Mm -hmm. We'd be in a mess. If they uh, put him in the grave, put the stone over, and set a watch, put the, 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 the soldiers there, and if that was it, we'd be in a mess. Y'all better be glad chapter 28 is in the Bible. Amen. Chapter 28 deals with the resurrection, which proves from chapter 1, I said everything tonight for two, almost two solid hours. Starting from chapter 1, him proving that he's from the tribe of Judah, all the way to chapter 28, proving that he rose from the dead. Now here you say, well there's people who rose from the dead before. People in the Old Testament. Elijah raised somebody from the dead. Uh, Lazarus was raised from the dead. That's not a big deal. Here, you have to understand something. Jesus Christ is the only one that was raised from the dead that never died again. Right. Everybody that was raised from the dead in the Old Testament had to die again. Wouldn't that be awful? I have to do it twice. <laughs> Lazarus. Can you imagine Lazarus? He'd been dead four days. He's in Abraham's bosom. Kick back, drinking glass sweet tea, having a good time. And all of a sudden, he hears a voice. Lazarus, <laughs> come forth. He has to leave Abraham's bosom, comes back to this world. He walks out of that tomb and he goes, he looks at his two sisters and goes, did y'all have anything to do with this? <laughs> I mean, people say, I, I mean, there's, the Bible's boring. That ain't boring. You know good and well Lazarus whooped them two sisters. I can't believe it. <laughs> Why am I back up here? Well, I mean, we told Jesus we wanted to see you again. I mean, you know. Just wait till I get y'all home. I was having a good time. And uh, anyway, there are all kind of funny stuff in the Bible. But 28, Jesus arose from the dead never to die again. And uh, that's why 28 is so important, the resurrection. And then uh, he says in verse 19 of 28, Go you therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, teaching them to serve all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. That means you ought not fly in an airplane. <laughs> amen. As Jesus said, and lo, I am with you always. Anyway, even in the end of the world, amen. And that is the overview of the book of Matthew. Question? Comment? 